All right, it's May 1977, and this movie is ended up being called Invasion. When I think about all my old movies from back in those days, this one ends up being the most disappointing. I'd had a friend that worked in, and I can't even remember what the place was, but it was the weirdest place. It, it had these strange hallways that just went in the weirdest directions, and pipes and stuff everywhere. The doors were more like hatches, and I thought, man, this would make the greatest alien spaceship set. And so I'd asked if we could shoot a movie in there, and they said, yeah. And so I came in, and I studied the place out, and I wrote this script uh, all about this weird alien spaceship that can create weird phantoms, and it had people from Earth ending up on it. And it was what I thought was pretty cool. And then literally, literally the night before we shot, they decided we couldn't film in there. And I'd already had everybody coming over to be in the film, and I had the monsters made already and all of that. And so we had to find another set, and we ended up going to the Torrance Stake Center, which looks nothing like a spaceship, okay? And then after that, the, the, the building wasn't set up right and the, for what I'd written, and just the whole thing fell apart. But if you'll notice, our space effects got a ton better. Look how good this looks. That looks like a real spaceship flying through space. I mean, at least we were able to figure out how to do quality, decent-looking science fiction special effects. Um, either that, or I just stole these special effects from the 1956 movie Forbidden Planet. One or the other. Either I got really good at special effects, or I just ripped these off. Probably just ripped these off. But anyway, so this movie starts off now, which has nothing to do with what I originally wrote, with an alien spaceship coming to Earth. And that would be this spaceship right here, coming into the planet to land. And as you can see, clearly, clearly that's Earth. That's, that's not an alien planet. Heck no, that's Earth. Now watch carefully, the, the, the UFO lands on Earth in some dazzling special effects. And then these big ladder things come and extend down to the planet so you can come and go from the spaceship. Okay, you with me with you with me on that so far? Okay, good. You gotta keep up. Alrighty, the little ladder things extend down to the planet. And here come some Earth people up to the spaceship. They saw it land. Now I don't remember seeing glass doors, but apparently there were glass doors with normal Earth type handles on them. But I'm not sure where because and I don't see those ladders extending to to these doors. But anyway. Um, and th those don't seem like airtight or, you know, could seal out outer space, those doors. But, you know, it's alien, so of course I'm sure they do. All right, now they're inside the alien spaceship. And, oh, look, here's just a wall. I wonder, I wonder where they're going to go, because there's just a wall there and, and no, place, no place else to search. But suddenly, ooh, mysteriously, the door opens up all by itself. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? So our, our friends here, our, our Earth people friends, are continuing to explore this alien spacecraft that has a bulletin board. Nice. Suddenly, this wicked-looking weapon is going to fire. Now, that's, that's my very first special effect right there. Okay, and Jim Gasolum gets hit in the chest. Uh, before I learned how to bleach la laser beams, I would scratch them with a needle. So that was a scratched-on laser beam effect. And all of us realized that our friend Jim is dead, basically so he can play aliens the rest of the movie. Now, for some reason, I just go off by myself in an alien spacecraft that, you know, is completely unknown to me and just start searching around by myself. Why I would do that is unclear. Because you know in a movie, if you go off by yourself, things like that are going to appear and beat the crap out of you, just like that. Now, that's Scott Moberly playing some kind of an Ant-Man monster. And again, I watch my head hit the ground. Bam! That hurt right there. But anyway, apparently all of our monsters wear sweatshirts and pants. My original script had, a re had an explanation for that but because this movie is not making any sense. No. That's Jenna Berry. She's feeling bad because I'm dead. Also in there's Keith Pally. That's Keith Pally's whose butt we're looking at right now. And they're pulling Jenna Berry away from me, who's sad that I'm dead. Apparently no one else is. There's Scott Moberly, and Sue Rector's in there, Andrea Piotrowski's in there, and they just go off and leave me dead. But look, Jenna is the only one that feels bad that I'm dead. Everyone else is, yeah, let's just move on. Forget him. And now we're going to walk all the way into this room. Here's some bad editing. They're going to walk all the way into the room, and then suddenly they're still outside the room. But they see something that scares them, and there's Jim Gastelum with a really bad paper mache monster mask on. And then over here is my little brother, Neil, with another really bad paper mache monster mask. And thankfully, this is the last movie with any paper mache monster mask. All right, the aliens grab all the Earth people. <laughs> Clearly, that's... Oh, and <laughs> Neil's... Neil's mask falls off, and he's trying to get out of the shot. Why didn't I reshoot this? I don't know. All right, everybody's like, oh, Andrea Andrea passes out from the fear of a paper mache monster. Now they have 
Keith Pally on a, ooh, they're performing some kind of experiment on Keith Pally on a table. Well, wait a minute, I'm not even dead. They went off and left me and I'm not even dead. What kind of friends are those? All right, apparently I'm dazed, but I'm not dead. Thanks a lot, friends. So now I'm staggering up, but clearly that's an alien spacecraft hallway. And I see something happening, so I attack them. Apparently I didn't die enough once. Oh, I shoot the monster twice, and he disappears. But now I fall against the wall. I'm still alive, though. The monster's attacking me. My friends who were so broken up that I was dead a minute ago, yeah, they just run away and leave me. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. All right, so now... Oh, Keith Pally's now, they've turned him into a monster with their weird scientific experiments. Okay, so now he's a monster. And suddenly, we're just up in Malaga Cove on the bridal path. I don't know how we got there, but that's where we are. Okay, and one of the monster masks was lying there on the road. We didn't think to clear that out of the way. Nice. And now, suddenly, Edwin Gurr is playing the monster that my brother was before, and they're bringing Jim Gastelum back right about now. See? And Jim's in charge, so he's going to tell him, let's go this way. Oh, okay, you're going this way, so we'll go that way instead. Good idea. And this is, okay, now back to the first day, because we shot this on two different days. Here's Scott Moberly and Jana Berry running away from the monsters. Great. And now here's the original monsters. Now, the, now my brother's back as a small monster again. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? This movie's falling apart fast. All right, Jana Berry and Scott Moberly are hiding down in this ditch as the monster's just above them. So they're hiding. Hopefully he won't see them. But then Scott gets an incredibly bright idea. Any moment now. Okay, Scott, get that bright idea. Okay, we'll keep watching the monster. Okay, he's got some rocks. He's gonna make noise somewhere else and draw the monster off. Good thinking. So he's throwing the rocks, and it does, it works. The monster's drawn off. But now it's the new day and Scott couldn't be there anymore, so now I'm playing Scott. And Jana couldn't be there at all, so we have to figure out we, what to do with her, so we're just gonna kill her. We're just gonna kill Jana. Our, our friend Jana, we're just gonna shoot her with a laser beam right here, and two different laser beams apparently, and now she's dead. And now here's A. David Walker, who, I, I forget how I know this guy, but anyway, he's just some guy playing on the rope swing there on the bridle path, but here comes Jim Gastelum as the monster. And, okay, he's still playing on the rope swing, and I'm, I'm pointing, look, monster, now he believes me that there's a monster, and now we're running which happens a lot in these movies. And here comes Jim Gaslam doing everything he can not to fall down. Well done. Meanwhile, A. David Walker is trying to get away from the monsters, but this is the second day, so now Edwin Gurr is back playing the monster that my brother was playing before, so he's gained about three feet in height. Now I'm trying to get away from Jim, who's the other monster, and I make it right up this steep hill, but watch the monster who you'd think would be, you know, he's a monster. He should be able to get up these kinds of things, but apparently not. Now he's gonna fall right there and break the handle, or break the barrel off the gun. Let's test that thing, make sure it still works. Boy, alien technology. That stuff works really well. All right, now they're torturing A. David Walker with their special little box that the red monster sweatshirt guys... Oh, but A. David Walker gets away from it and smashes it. That makes them have problems for some reason, and... Oh, they disappear in a flash of light. And in case you haven't figured it out, by this point we've completely thrown away my original script, and we're just kind of making this up as we go. Because by this point, this movie's gone in a completely off-the-wall direction that had nothing to do with my original script. So, we have to finish off the amount of film we have left, so we're just going to have a big chase scene. Which was very common in my movies back then. So I'm trying to get away from Jim Gasolum, this big, tall, yellow-headed monster with a broken gun. Who has a hard time seeing where he's going. And here's a David Walker trying to figure out where I'm at. I'm trying to get away from the monster. I'm going to try to get down this hill. Ooh, slips and falls. But I'm trying to get down this steep hill right here, which we used in some other movies that I have not digitized yet. Anyway, I'm going to fall. Catch the tree. Nice save, Randy. Good job. Okay, the monster is still trying to chase me. He has a much harder time seeing through the mask, so he's not looking nearly as good as I do. That doesn't stop him from trying to chase me down, however. And what's in his back pocket? Some kind of paperwork. All right, I'm out in the middle of this log, and I have no... Oh, the monster hits me, and I'm falling. Oh, no, I'm in serious trouble. If that monster knocks me off that branch, I could fall, I guess. Now, here comes the other guy, A. David Walker. I don't know why the A, really, but that's just what he liked. 
So he's running along, and for some reason, even though the monster had his gun down there with him, it's suddenly back up here on top of this hill. And even though this man can't possibly know how to shoot it, he shoots it anyway. And while the monster's trying to kill me, the guy who's never shot that gun before hits him and destroys him. And saves me from an alien invasion movie that is so god-awful, it's hard to watch. But right on, dude. Thanks for saving me. Now he comes down this steep hill. I don't know why, really. Um, I guess just to stand there and watch me walk back from the log. That's right. Terrible movie and so much less than what I'd originally written. But, you know, hey, at least the good guys prevailed and the aliens were vanquished from Earth. And there's your hero, apparently posing. But here comes Jim Gastelum. Say hi, Jim. Good to see you. And this movie's so bad, even the aliens are pissed off at me. Alright, that movie could have been really cool, but guess what? It wasn't.